you're lucky, and I was. Your parents are your first mentors. And like a lot of boys, I was very close with my father. Loved him for his many gifts, among them a dry but hilarious sense of humor. He helped me to discover my passion for music, our mutual love-hate relationship with Catholicism, and even how to hold a cigarette in such a way as to not get caught smoking at concerts. <laughs> when I had just turned 16, my dad took me on a road trip to Columbus to show me all his old stomping grounds. On the car ride down and back, we had some of the deepest conversations a father and son could have. He spoke with me about the experiences that shaped his life, and where he failed and where he succeeded, and even what kind of man he wanted me to become. Most of us are never prepared to lose a parent, let alone early in one's life. But two months after our trip to Columbus, my dad died of cancer. Losing a parent at 16 robbed me of that sense of immortality that most young adults now take for granted. Sobered me up to the realization that our time on this earth is short, and you better get to it. But at 16 years old, I had no freaking clue as to what I was supposed to do next. This is all serious. That's my dad. My mother will appear on the screen in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> my mother, who is more a saint to me than a mentor, cold called my godfather, Frank Picaro, a week after my father's funeral and asked him to take me to breakfast. That breakfast at Wally Waffles, yeah. the old location on Hawkins, which I'm still convinced <laughs> Wally Waffles I'm still convinced they taste better. Well, that breakfast, it rescued me. See, Frank had made a career in government and in politics, something that I myself was thinking of getting into and was interested in, but had yet to explore further at that moment. Frank introduced me to politics, got me volunteering on several campaigns, kept me focused on my undergraduate studies. He counseled me through my successful school board race, always cheering me on until one day I got the phone call from my godmother, Linda, to come see Frank at the house. Frank had been ill with what he thought was the flu, but when back was terminal cancer. Frank passed away just weeks after the meeting at the house. Frank's death hit me hard, but soon after his passing, a friend that Frank had introduced me to several years prior stepped up in my life. I still remember meeting my first meeting with Russ Pride. I was a complete asshole. <laughs> At 20 years old, I felt I was ready for elected office and didn't need some political boss to tell me I had to wait my turn. Most folks would have sent me packing, but not Russ. He persisted with me because he saw something in me that I couldn't. He helped me to secure my first job out of college, helped me buy my engagement ring for my wife, celebrated our achievements with us. And even when I wasn't working directly in politics, he never turned down a request for lunch or a phone call. He convinced me to stay in grad school, even when I wanted to quit. And all along the way, he took a 20-year-old smartass and taught him how to serve well and value life. I'm still not sure whether it was because he meant so much to me, or perhaps it's just my particular time of life. But losing Russ this year really shook me to the core. All my mentors had died on me. What was I supposed to learn from this? So I did what I normally do, and I searched for some higher purpose than all the loss. <laughs> and that search, that search for some higher purpose in all of this, what led me to explore more deeply what mentorship really means to me. Mentorship, I fear, I fear this, is becoming a corporate program you sign up for in the break room in hopes of advancing your career. <laughs> Folks, we must resist this trend. We must resist this trend. To me, mentorship is not about the simple transfer of knowledge. It is the art of organically sparking creative and humanitarian forces that lie within each of us. A study of 94 Nobel laureates <laughs> found that almost all of them Almost all of them attributed their success to one key mentor they had in their life. But when asked how they specifically benefited from their mentor, knowledge ranked at the bottom. 
Most replied with a description of a mentor who modeled how to think, modeled how to create, modeled how to feel, and yes, even modeled how to live well. I recently read that a mentor is like a catalyst in a chemical reaction. Crucial, yes, but unsung, as many chemists will tell you. But once the molecules have rearranged themselves, not a trace of the catalyst can be detected. Read that again. Not a trace of the catalyst can be detected. And so as I look back on the losses of my mentors, while I still miss them dearly, I've begun to realize the true mentor-mentee relationships, much like that chemical reaction, really aren't meant to last forever or garner us professional rewards but rather they are meant to stimulate and motivate each of us to rearrange our creative DNA and be better human beings. And when that happens, it's not just two people who benefit, society benefits, and in fact, the whole world benefits. And what I like about viewing mentorship in this way, and part of what hit me losing Russ this year, is that I too have the ability to be a mentor. And in fact, I owe it to those giants in my life to do just that.